Welcome to Lost in Revision. All of our content is public domain, literature, fairy tales, and folklore. We are here to celebrate the original stories, not just read the modern sanitized versions. We post short segments of stories daily and monthly full episodes where we read and discuss popular classics. Come and find us on Patreon to listen to the full chapters early and without interruption. Our goal is to at least break even to cover our expenses, so any support that you can offer to help us reach that goal helps keep this podcast going and you entertained. All of our music is by Nathan Hubble and is used with his permission. Thanks, and enjoy the show. Chapter 10. Paul Bunyan's Pets. Part 2. Elmer met with a serious accident one night which came near putting an end to his career. He had slipped into the dark bunkhouse and was making a bed for himself among some old clothes in the corner when Paul heard a slight noise. There's another one of those pesky rats, he growled to himself and hurled his axe as hard as he could in the direction of the sound. He was a very sorrowful man indeed, when a moment or two later he made a light and saw what he had done. He had hurled his axe at Elmer instead of at a rat, and the flying blade had hit the dog squarely in the middle, slicing him in half just as nicely as you please. Paul got busy at once trying to save the poor animal's life. He succeeded in getting the two parts joined together again and sewed up nicely, and so fast did he work, and such a good job did he do, that Elmer recovered. In his great hurry, though, Paul had put the hind quarters on the wrong way, so that the dog's hind legs stuck straight up in the air, in just the opposite direction from the front ones. Thus the poor animal had two feet pointing down and two pointing up, no matter on which pair he stood. When the great moose terrier finally recovered, he found it rather difficult to move about with any degree of speed, owing to his new fore and aft condition. Paul missed the dog greatly every time he went hunting and finally he called Shot Gunderson to him and gave him some instructions. I want you to go out in the woods and catch a tote road shagamaw for me, he ordered. Bring it back to camp alive without hurting or scaring it in any way, and perhaps we can persuade Elmer to adopt the shagamaw's method of traveling. There was something to Paul's plan and Shot Gunderson nodded his head in agreement as he set off on his errand. The Tote Road Shagamaw was a very queer animal, he knew. In fact, it was one of the queerest creatures in the woods, and he agreed that its unique peculiarities should make it a most desirable companion for Elmer in his present crippled condition. The Shagamaw like the injured dog, had his hind and forelegs pointing in different directions also. He had made the most of his disability, however, and had even developed it into a valuable quality. Both pairs of legs could never be used at the same time, so when the tote road shagamaw walked along, it would travel first on the front pair, with the hind one sticking up into the air. Then, when the front legs became tired, it would reverse and travel for a while on its hind pair while it gave the others a rest. This caused a lot of puzzlement and bewilderment among woodsmen for the reason that the shagamaw's front feet were those of a bear, and its hind feet were exactly like the hooves of a moose. Thus, when it walked and shifted from one set of legs to the other, moose tracks and bear tracks would very strangely take the place of one another. This was, of course, puzzling and disgusting to the average person. A moose hunter would lose all interest when he suddenly found that the moose he had been trailing 
had evidently been suddenly devoured by a bear. And a bear hunter would give up the chase in bewilderment when he strangely discovered that what he thought were bear tracks were really moose tracks in the last analysis. Bipedister delucissimus is the name by which the tote road shagabaw is known to science. This creature was at one time quite plentiful in the woods, but of recent years it has become very scarce. The last one to be seen by a reputable authority was discovered in Maine in the spring of 1901. When seen, the animal was solemnly following a range line through the woods, marking off first an exact quarter mile of bear tracks, and then a quarter mile of moose tracks, with great precision. When the strange animal had been captured and brought into camp, Paul soon managed to establish it on friendly terms with Elmer. The Moose Terrier was a very smart dog indeed, and he eyed his new companion with the greatest interest. It was not strange, therefore, that a very short time later, Elmer began to imitate the strange manner in which the Shagamaw was accustomed to walking. And before many days had passed, he had become very proficient in his new method of getting over the ground. Thus the moose terrier came through his dreadful accident better off than he had been before. After he had mastered his new method of traveling, he never grew tired. He could run on his front legs until they became weary and then turn over and use the other pair while he rested the tired ones in this way keeping himself always fresh, even through hours of strenuous running. He soon became a better hunting dog than ever before, for he could outrun anything in the woods and he never grew tired. Thanks for joining us today. Check us out on Patreon. The storytime level is only $3, and you can help us meet our small goal of breaking even and covering our expenses. Your support helps pay for all of the things that podcasting requires and helps keep this show alive and growing. If you can't afford to support us financially, go give us a good review, subscribe or follow and share with your friends and family. Feel free to fact check us and offer suggestions to make our show better for you. You can also send us an email at lost in revision podcast at gmail.com. There's a lot more waiting for us all at the end.